Let's have to shut that. All right. Hold on. We are recording, big dog. We're we're rolling. We're rolling. We're rolling. Uh, we're rolling buddy. So let me tell you about. Okay, you just got up, and you have a uh, 2014 NCAA tournament chair you're sitting in, right? Oh yeah. Right. You didn't realize it, did you? That's right. <laughs> a chair you guys you coached in. What's your yeah. first year at Notre Dame College, Sonny? Uh, I believe 11 12 season. It was the first year of uh, Division II. The first year we went into Division II. From NAI, because they transitioned, right? Yes. Okay. So 11 12 season. Um, yeah, 11 and 12. Are when you Joey Davis first came in? I, that's when I came in. Okay, are you ready for a quick trivia question? I guess so. Let's do it. Who's the last team to win NAIA Wrestling National Championships not named Grandview? Notre Dame. <laughs> you realize that? Dude, that's crazy. They are they're pretty good, dude. They're they're they like are. you guys. They're like you guys that like they get the talent like you guys get. Yeah, they do a great job, you know. Uh, you know that Iowa feeding over there is, is phenomenal, right? Yeah. And uh, I think that coach um, does a great job. Coach I Mitchell. Mean, yeah, he's doing a good job. I mean, you can tell the the coaches that run great programs, you know, and you can just see at the tournaments if you know national duels things like that, how his guys around him carry him right and uh, you know uh, the respect is there you know he's doing something good he's doing something really good uh he's doing something that i think nobody else has done is that right yeah I, yeah i, don't, I mean they're they're killing it dude I, I, as far as naia that's the last time they didn't win i don't, I don't even know if they, that's so crazy i know it's so it's crazy. crazy because you you've been in D two for a decade. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, I've been at Notre Dame eight years now, and yeah, just under a decade, right? Yeah. And, and you know, you saw it like you saw the meteor meteoric rise, right? Like you guys, you get in D two, and and within two years you win it. Yeah. Two years, well, three calendar years, but like within two seasons, you guys are the champs of Division two NCA. That that's amazing. Like, and and the recruiting classes, and I think you know, like if you just look at like the old school recruiting, Anthony Ralph, obviously, Tom Ryan mm -hmm. didn't pick his name out of a hat, and I know you and Anthony are pretty close, right? Yeah, for sure, real close. It, it, the recruiting and what you guys have done with the job recruiting and and, and putting the the team on the mat, I, it, just, it amazes me every year, Sonny. Yeah, it's uh, you know from the inside, uh, you know you got to have the people on the inside to make anything work, anything. Right. So I think that's where Notre Dame's lucky. And, you know, I'm lucky in the program and everybody that's came through the program, like Anthony Ralph and, you know, any of those guys, uh, coach Romano, uh, you know, to deal with, you know, all of us, Zeb and, and to deal with all of us, <laughs> you gotta be a special program, right? <laughs> yeah. But, but Northeast so that, does, you know, you're in, you're in, you know, you're a Northeast Ohio guy. You're a uh, North Canton. You know, mm -hmm. you know, you, you were a Hoover Viking as a freshman, right? Right. And Dolph, yep. Brian Dolph's a Hoover Viking. And what's crazy to me is two of the all-time greatest guys to wrestle for North Canton Hoover never won state there. Correct. Isn't that wild? Right. Yeah, I know. Were you uh, a freshman? Yeah, I was a runner-up as a freshman, and I believe uh, Brian took third his senior year. Yeah, I think, yeah, Brian right. was third, baby, once, right? Yeah. So crazy. So, yeah, you know, that just – you know, North Canton uh, was a great place as well. I grew up there, and um, the coach, Walt Talarczyk, is the, is the guru that, you know, made North Canton wrestling. So, you know, he – taught me my foundation and then I'm sure if you talk to you know Brian he would probably tell you the same thing uh I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you know Walt Larchick 
you know, I, I was thinking of something the other day, <laughs> and it always has, like, rumbled through my head since he told me. I was a freshman in high school there, and Walter Flarstrick, Mr. T, we called him. You know, he told me, he's like, Sonny, you know, you're – take this in a good way, but you're – I, you're going to be a wrestling bum. And right off the bat, I'm like, wrestling bum? Like, you call me a bum coach? And it was it was far from that. You know, it was totally far from that. His point was, you know, I can see you love the sport of wrestling so much that, you know, I mean, I wrestled a couple of days ago. Um, and I know what he meant by it. I am a wrestling bum and I'll be one the rest of my life as far as wrestling wise. Um, um, you know, I love to wrestle. I love the sport. And I think he just meant like, I'm sure you'll live and die by this sport uh, is what he meant. And, you know, I think the true love of the sport. So yeah, he taught, he taught a lot, a lot. My entire foundation was built around Mr. T at North Canton. So here's what's crazy about just I gotta point this out to you. What what made I gotta to me what made Sonny Marchetti not a wrestling bum? Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Actually, it's funny. We call uh, I got a friend. He we call people who like never get away from the sport and never really they don't have like official capacities and they're just always around. We call them right. we call them wrestling hobos. Oh okay. Um, and what makes you not a wrestling hobo to me? Dude, like, you inspired me. Two years ago, three years ago, whenever it was, you really inspired me. And probably yeah. the hardest thing you've ever done in your life. As, yeah. as a father, as a coach, as an athlete, whatever, as a mentor to kids. You, went, you got a degree at, like, 39 years old. And had a, another child and moved into a house that same year. That was a, that was that that brought me. <laughs> that, that, dude, that, that was is that the hardest thing you've done? Yes. You know, I think for me, hardest thing I've done that I've completed. Maybe that's uh, a better way to put it. Uh that's probably the hardest thing that I've done. It is the hardest thing I've done that I've completed. Um in that year, uh it, you know, I almost wrestled Zeb. I was, I was full time. So it wasn't like I was taking one class. I, I had four classes. You were a my, 12 hour, 12 credit hour student. My senior year, which was two years ago, uh, my last semester, uh, actually not the last semester, the entire last year, I was full time. I was four classes, 12 credits, and uh, we actually looked into me competing. Could you have? I know that Contos did a couple years ago. Contos did at Dubuque a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. So the only re we looked into it, I got, I was even, um, I got a physical. I did the uh, uh, testing and, and everything. So uh, the only reason why I wasn't able is because I'm a paid full-time staff member at the institution. So you couldn't do it. Your family, you would have had to, like, get your job cut. You'd have to do a bunch. And then your fringe benefit, do they do fringe benefits? Does your school count as a fringe benefit? Yeah. Okay. So, like, then you'd have to pay for school or they'd have to get a scholarship. It had gone and yep. it would have been a logistical mess. It wouldn't have made any sense for you. Correct. So the only uh, reason why I was going to do it, I was just going to do it for one match. I would never have taken a spot from one of my own guys either. You know, I wouldn't have been, I wouldn't have done that. Um, you know, at the time I was 39, 40. So, um, you know, the, I would have tried to Mike Tyson it, right? <laughs> Come back for one last <laughs> exhibition. That's all I want. That's all I want. He's only I got one left like, in the tank. He's only going to pay like 50 or $100 million to come back and do that one fight, right? I'd do it for free. <laughs> that's the thing. Oh, you guys just love it, man. You love it. That's, a, that's what I love about it is that, that you love it so much. I mean, dude, you're so passionate about it. I've come to the practices, and yep. I've come to practice in the last four or five years, and 
you're still doing the whole practice. You're doing all the drilling. You're doing all the live and you're coaching. And I, do you still do that much now as a head coach? No, no, I can't. Uh, plus I got two guys, you know, that are, they're young, uh, with Corey Stainbrook and Nate Skenesny that coach, uh, right along with me. And, you know, those guys are the young bucks, uh, that work every day. And, um, and wrestle and drill and kind of do the same format that I was doing. Um, no, I got to do that on my own now. You know, I, I, I've moved, I think, to the, uh, to the next stage of, of wrestling working out, which is hitting a heavy bag and, you know, doing it on my own time. That way, you know, things as a head coach for me are a lot, you know, different, you know, scheduling practices and, and running it and, and, uh, things like that so that the head coaching position I love uh because I've been able to change what I do you know in, in a dip in an easier format kind of so he calls you a wrestling bum you're 14 or 15 years old this guy calls you a wrestling bum Talarchuk calls you a wrestling bum did you ever mm -hmm. see yourself as a head coach at an NCAA D2 program is that ever even a thought that crossed your mind Sonny uh that's a tough question. Uh, no, no, it didn't. Uh, you know, if you asked me then, I was planning on being Olympic champion, world champ, and a whole, a whole bit. Um, just like all the other, you know, top young kids out there. So, no, I wasn't, uh, I didn't really think, uh, you know, I knew I'd wrestle. I knew I'd compete um, my whole life, you know. so. You know, it's what I love to do. I get up, work out. That's what I did this morning. So I was a little bit late. <laughs> uh, getting up, hitting the bag, and, you know, boxing and, and stuff like that's been a big part of my life uh, of training. So, yeah, you know, I, I've tried to alternate all my workouts. Now I'm in the, you know, scooters and skateboard and um, bikes and things like that because of my little guy. Uh, but yeah, I've always been into other stuff as well. I played tennis, um, actually, and when I was in ju junior college, I was on the uh, golf team the week after I won the national title. Are you serious? In Chico. Yeah, I, I, I was in Chico, uh, California, uh, on the golf links. NorCal, as they like to call it. Beautiful NorCal, Dude, too. NorCal. Is Dude. That. And what I don't it know, is. they call it. They call the Bay Area and they call Sacramento NorCal. To me, that's not really NorCal because I do a lot of traveling in California. NorCal yeah. to me is like weed. It's uh, cheap. Trumbull hum or Humble. Humble. Um, we did the King Range out there. We, my wife and I did like a Pacific Coast on the King Range. We did like a 26-mile hike there. Uh, White Thorn, Fort Bragg. Uh, NorCal to me is like the like Truckee, yeah, Truckee. Um, Getting into Reno almost yeah, over there. Yeah, Truckee yeah. is is like Tahoe almost. Right. And, um, but yeah, we like took I, that every I don't consider that because you went to Lassen, right? You went to Lassen Junior College. Yeah, that's pretty north. That's uh, north. North. That's what I say. We always flew into Reno, Nevada, and then drove an hour and 15 minutes through Truckee and um Donner Pass that's Donner Pass. Donner Pass yeah yeah where all the way in the where they took a shortcut they got a seven feet of snow on them and then they had to eat each other that that's where yeah, yeah pass that every time <laughs> George Donner and Tams and Donner that that is I teach about that we're actually really yeah yeah I taught about it a couple of weeks ago I did a, a, a online lecture we didn't really wow. get into it as much this year with it being online, but like when I'm in class and I can talk to the kids about it, when they rolled up on them, there was like a five gallon, uh, like a stew pot with human blood when the, when the rescue party finally got to the Donner party. But that, that's where you wow. went to junior college, right over there. Yeah. Yeah. No, I know Donner's past. Right? Because truck is yeah, closer we... to Lassen. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. that's NorCal to me because, like, we go to Reno and Tahoe and we do vacation stuff there, and I've driven out west a couple times. 
I saw Kyle so well. did a trip across the country. Um, my brother just did a trip out there with uh, with Hayden Brawny and Nick Mason. Just literally did a trip with my brother out there. Literally, yeah, they came back last Friday. <laughs> Why not? Why yeah, not? Oh, yeah, my brother ran a load of steel out to yeah. uh, to like uh, the Olympic Peninsula in Washington, and then yeah. they, they hit the uh, they hit the Redwoods. They hit the Pacific Coast 101. They did all the NorCal stuff. But they said everything was super weird because it was closed down. They went to the, the Redwoods. They, they slept a night in the Redwoods. The Brawny and Mason set a, a tent up on the side of a mountain. And my brother, he's a wimp. He slept in the Tahoe that they had. <laughs> and, but those, and then some lady was like, oh, are, you guys aren't walking around here, are you? And they're like, oh, no, we're good. We're, uh, no. Yeah, no, no, it's quarantine. We don't want anybody to get sick out here with nobody else in this hundreds of square miles of wilderness we don't want anybody to get sick yeah yeah i know right yeah Where oxygen and yeah yeah or just, uh, no people to make us sick. maybe the trees will make you sick i don't know but what was the, why okay first things first you got a wall shirt on all your assistant coaches are walsh you started mm -hmm. with North can hoover what, what was the move the walsh about let's let's hit rewind let's just rewind okay how'd you end up at walsh from from hoover yep um uh, Bottom line is I was at North Canton and then, uh, you know, Walter Larchick was a phenomenal coach. And then uh, what basically happened is uh, my dad passed away, right? So um, died my freshman year, had uh, pancreas cancer. Hold on, buddy. Uh, had pancreatic cancer and um, my coach, Walter Larchick, was at that time technically retiring uh to uh north carolina one second really hello hi don't yeah no it's all good the are gonna pop in here don't worry right oh, i know it's Game, the, it. well it's working at home right yeah <laughs> that's that, with kids and yeah um so yeah, no, I uh, and then Walter Larchick was going to uh, North Carolina, where his daughter is from, and um, so he was leaving uh, North Canton. So I'd probably only had him for a year anyway. And then uh, you know, with my dad, that happened. And how old was you when your dad passed away? Fifteen. Yeah, I was fifteen. You know. <laughs> and uh, okay, so in that instance, in that year, dad passed away. Clarchick left. Did you had to feel like almost like um, like and, and and this was a part of his plan. He had a daughter down there, and, you know, and, and mm -hmm. can't always change your life for students and kids you coach. But you almost had to feel a little abandoned, man. Like it, it, that's tough. Yeah, it was tough. You know, it, it was super tough. It was so tough. And people probably make fun of me for this, but you know, I think that's where I got involved in boxing. Because I'm not kidding, I I wanted to so bad find where Mike Tyson lived in Ohio in Columbus, and knock on his freaking door and be like, "Hey, you need to come outside. We need to talk." Because I think I might be a little bit like you, <laughs> you know. Uh, you know, his coach left, and um, you know, and and things like that. So it just, uh, yeah, it was tough. Uh, it was real tough, but uh, Bill Barger, Walsh Jesuit, they've been a family of mine my whole life as well. Uh, so North Akron is where I grew up wrestling. And, um, I mean, it was second nature just to go to Walsh. It really was. Um, so the, the transfer over was not tough at all, going from North Canada as a freshman to Walsh Jesuit because other friends, family, and and every and coaches that I had there as well. Um, so. Yeah, the transition was was easy on, uh, on that part. Um, and then I had really good friends right away, uh, lifelong friends, you know. Did you – you got – you didn't wrestle as a sophomore. Did you get hurt? Yeah, I wrestled. You did wrestle. What year did you – your junior year you got hurt? Mm -mm. What year did you mm -mm. not – you're a two-time – Actually, you to, uh, two-time. As a yeah. sophomore, I, I got hurt. The crazy part 
that most people probably don't know either what matter, but, um, you know, you asked about the freshman year and all that stuff that happened. So I believe it was, uh, you know, state tournament in March, right? Okay. State tournament in March. Um, and then after the state tournament, I take second there. My dad's really sick. And then, uh, then I'm training for the uh, cadet world team trials, right? Out in uh, Chicago, Chicago, right? Uh, in Chicago there. So at Northwestern. And uh, I would say, uh, so I wrestled there. I beat Adam Terrapelli. I beat uh, Griffin Powell, some pretty tough kids. And then uh, I have a guy named Kale Sanderson, uh, I believe in the finals. Oh yeah. So he beat me, uh, I think, well, I know he got uh, on top at the end, but I don't believe there was a takedown involved uh, at all. So I had him in the finals. Three then, and, Sonny? Was it a two out of three? Or just no. one? One. Okay. Uh, so wrestled him in the finals, and then, uh, you know, it, it, it was probably within minutes, if not already happened, that my dad actually did pass away. So when I was wrestling Kale, pretty much, you know, that's what was going on. So I lose to Kale uh, in the World Team Trials, uh, cadets, and uh, literally drive home right from there that night and uh you know before we pulled my house my coach had to call me or had to pull over you know he's driving me home and he can't pull in the driveway because there's you know a thousand cars because my dad passes you no know so. in chicago you don't find out until you get back to north canton yeah oh yep. my gosh so that's like that's eight ten hours after yeah. the fact whereas now with cell phones you'd know everything that's what like right. you kids realize today, like. Well, you know, it, the way I look at it, you know, it must've been so hard for, you know, my coach to tell me that, you know, now that I'm a coach on my side, I, you know, and that's probably why I'm pretty close with my guys, but I couldn't imagine having to tell, you know, a young kid that, that situation right before he, you know, pulls in his own door because there's all these cars. So I'm going to know pulling in. And so the decision he probably had to make where, hey, I probably, I don't know if I should be the one telling them or what, uh, but yet I can't have this young man walk in, a, in his own house and find out that way either. Who was the coach? Ms. Walt Tolarczyk. It was, it was Walt. Mm -hmm. he, was, mm -hmm. he took you to Chicago. Mm -hmm. He was on his way out the door. That's probably May then, right? This guy's retired uh, and moved to North Carolina, right? I mean. Yeah, so no, that back then the uh, trials and all that was in April. Was April. So, but yeah, yeah. he's on his way out the door. He's retiring in a month, right? So my birthday is April 7th. So it was like all, all this happened on my 16th birthday. Jesus. <laughs> Literally my 16th birthday. Jesus. Um, Jesus. Lose. Lose the world trials, which was my lifelong goal, because a year before I lost to Eric Guerrero in the finals, and it broke my heart. I was so pissed. And then I trained like a madman uh, that next year to try and make the work, you know, cadet world team, and and then I lose to Kale in the finals. But you so know, the freshman in high school, you lost to Guerrero. The and the sophomore, you lost to Sanderson. Uh, Eighth, Eighth grader, grade, you lost to Guerrero. Ninth grader, you lost to Sanderson. Yeah. Why didn't you get to wrestle the one year at Walsh? I did. But you did. You won two state titles. Yeah. So, at the uh, state duels, sophomore year, state duels. It was at Wadsworth High School. We were wrestling Pickerington. Um, just it was just Pickerington then. It wasn't North and East or whatever then. It was just no, one. I, well, I was where what's his name went to school. It was really Brad good. Harris. Yeah, Brad and uh, not just Brad, but the other kid was really tough. I wrestled him. Um, it was like a two-time state champ. Anderson. For, 
Keaton Anderson. Keaton, it. you got it. Keaton. So I, I was wrestling one of them uh, and blew out my ACL in the middle of the match. That's what it was. Okay. Yep. I knew there was an injury. So your soft, that was your sophomore year or your junior year? That was my sophomore year. But I did finish the match, and I tech followed the kid. That was important to me. I'll never forget the doctor on the mat telling Bill Barger, he's done. He is done. Like, his knee is done. And then I think I flipped out on both Bill and the doctor and told him probably to uh, move nicely. And uh, I went back down and finished the match and got my tech fall. And then, uh, you know, after the match, my knee was humongous. So, yeah, that whole, you know, that whole stretch was, it was moving. That was uh, like a year within, from, that's like eight or ten, nine, nine months in between losing your dad and then you get this like horrific injury in your life. What's it like, Sonny, when you're like, and I know I, I had my, mm -hmm. my ACL as well. And, you know, I was a three sport athlete and it was tough. What was it like for you, man? Like being off your feet for two or three months. <laughs> uh, I don't know if I was off my feet for that long. I think I was off my feet for a month. I was a maniac uh, uh, back then. I would, I would have considered uh, having an ACE, you know, a torn ACL and you know I, I remember about a month and a half afterwards uh you know meeting with Clint Musser at Penn State and you know jumping off the quarry you know at Penn State the quarry there um it, it was sweet it, it was uh like beach MTV back there and I have this you know brace on my entire knee leg going from my hip to my ankle and Clint uh, you know, met up with some guys and, you know, they're at the quarry and, you know, it was just like beach MTV hanging out. Yeah. And so the next thing you know, Clint looks over and, uh, I'm at the top of the mountain type deal and in the air. <laughs> he's jumping. Like, yeah. And he, he's like, Oh my, you know, what is going on? I'm supposed to kind of watch you. Right. And then he looks over, I'm climbing up a rock, like a huge rock, Quarry Mountain type deal. And he was just like, oh my God. So after that, you know, I kind of, uh, you know, just took it off. I was wrestling within a couple, you know, months, but officially couldn't compete or anything like that. And then as a junior, when did you start wrestling uh, Billman? When, were, when did the rivalry start with Billman? Obviously, you had a bunch of rivalries, a bunch of really good guys. But the Jamar Billman rivalry with Sonny Marchetti is like the one that a lot of people think of as like the greatest Ohio PA rivalry, right? When did yeah. that start? Your junior year, your sophomore? When when did you guys start banging heads? Um, it was at a Christmas tournament uh, in I think Bethlehem, PA, and. It would probably, I think, my sophomore year, technically, I think the first time I wrestled him, there was at a dual Christmas holiday tournament. And I remember going through the lineup with the coaches and the wrestlers. And I believe Frank Favaro wrestled him the year before and might have beat him kind of gig or really close or somebody beat. So it was like, all right, you got Billman. And I didn't know who he was uh, at the time. And um, it was like, okay. You know, I'll go wrestle them and, and do my thing, and and they beat me. So it was like, okay, well, that's gonna, you know, that can't happen. <laughs> so I don't know. I, then I end up getting hurt, um, you know, later on in the season. But I don't think I came across him again until probably uh, Iron Man, my junior year, in the finals. So I wrestled him in the junior year or my junior year in the finals and, and beat him. So three, one or three, two or whatever the score was, beat him in the Ironman finals as a junior. And then we wrestle, you know, a couple of times in the freestyle in the summertime and, you know, uh, go back and forth and type deal. And then we, 
we go to battle for the next year, senior year, big year, who's number one in the country and, you know, back and forth, number one, number two. Um, and then we meet in the Ironman finals, which was a really big, you know, type deal. And he beat me uh, three to two, four to two, you know, by takedown uh, type deal. And then uh, that summer we wrestle at uh, Fargo in a semis for the junior national, you know, junior nationals. I beat them there and then made the finals and, and won Fargo and beat Carr um, in the finals. And then uh, wrestle freestyle back and forth, back and forth. And then um, wrestle my very last match in 2004 at the US Open. And my very last match was against Tim. So, um, yeah, me and him was came full circle. I think the cool thing was, you know, we were like two of the same kind of kids in a way. You know, I think that's what was pretty cool. There wasn't really, a, you know, an opposite. We were both badasses, fast, quick. We had, we, we like mirrored each other. Mm -hmm. um, and it was just a battle to see who is probably, you know, the best at that time. So I think that was pretty neat. And uh, inside, you know, me and Jamar talked a lot. You know, we were friends. <laughs> we loved it. And we would mess with each other. And, you know, after he beat me my senior year, you know, I sat down next to him and his dad at the Ironman, in the, you know, watching the finals. And I'm like, dude, what was that move? What did you do? So he did a, the patented slide by. He hit with a slide uh, by. Yeah, he hit me with a slide by back then. So, yeah, we, you know, we became really good friends uh, at that time and uh, trained together after that. And uh, so it was a pretty neat deal. You guys recently, were you at the – Iron Man for the anniversary of that match with him. Were you there? Yeah. And you guys talk. Yeah. What's he up to now? What's Jamar Billman do now? Well, he's the head coach for Easton. He's the head he's... coach at Easton now, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. Full, full yeah. circle for two freaking absolute maniacs. And he was a two-time All-American. Yeah. Was it once for Penn State, once for Lock Haven? Am I wrong there? It was either that or Colette. Right, <laughs> they're the same. Kind of I think he followed like a pretty similar path, actually. Yeah, I think he did. Like, I he was I, an American I, at least for Penn State once. I want to say, I, too. I could be wrong because when nationals were in Cleveland, was that 97 98? That would be 98. 98, he was a true freshman, dude. A true freshman, and he was like on a tear. I, I think, I don't know if he beat McGinnis or. Uh, he was doing some pretty good things back then. Yeah, he was a freak, dude. So, yeah. okay, let's let's talk about freaks. Let's talk about the junior college national championship picture that just recently showed up online. I yeah. sent it to you. It's it's um, it's it's you. It's Tony Davis. Uh, I think Claude Al Ruffin. I think I remember the Claude Al Ruffin guy. He was national champ then. Cormier, John Lester, McGee. What say it again? Johnny McGee. Johnny <laughs> McGee. <laughs> what a freak. Yeah. Uh, so so but like the big one, obviously the big stars now. Yeah. Yep, yep. Do one of the biggest stars on the planet, Brock Lesnar. Yeah. And then Daniel, I see Daniel on ESPN. He's calling all these he's calling all those ESPN fights right now. Yeah, all he those fights those know, quarantine fights. He's calling Daniel's calling all of them. Have you noticed that? Yeah, I seen him uh, in the cage there, and you know I try to follow uh, a lot of the UFC and stuff. And uh, he was at the Iron Man last year, and I was able to hang out with him a little bit. And Daniel, uh, cool. he's a cool guy. And he's a cool guy. He's a wrestler, right? Yeah, that cool guy. He's a wrestler that. Uh, you know, I think his personality, what makes him special is his personality stayed true to wrestler. You know, as obviously he's a badass, you know, fighter, one of yeah. the best of all time. Uh, but I think he, I think as a wrestler, he took the top-notch wrestling format mentality 
and he was a big representative for it anyway because he was on Olympic teams and yeah. you know things like that. So he was kind of our you know high end push. At, yeah, you know, he really uh, was. He really was. Yeah. And obviously, like you had Couture. Well, the mainstream, Coleman, the Randy main, Wren, right? Like, but now well, he kind of took the torch from those guys, and he evolved. Yeah. He evolved more than those guys did, I think. I think he's a better yeah, a better athlete than those guys. I don't know if he's tougher than those guys, but I think no, him, I, him and Stipe are better athletes than those guys, right? Yeah, you know, I don't. I mean, Mark Coleman and those cats, you know, from before were one of the top athletes, you know, on the planet. My brother said Mark Coleman was like a really good athlete. Yeah, any of those guys could, you know, do anything. They could probably yeah. even do standing backflips back in the day. Yeah, they're freaks. But I think Daniel's even a better athlete than those guys, and I think Stipe's a better athlete. Am yeah, I athlete? well, I, I think Cormier is uh, that wrestler, you know, that, that puts in the work. I don't know if he's a better athlete. As my definition of an athlete, that would be able to do like every other sport, do a backflip. Okay. Deepay goes and he can hit bombs out of freaking progressive field, Jacobs Field. Right? Deepay can probably dunk a basketball reverse. You know, he's yeah. a gigantic athletic guy. Whereas Dude. Daniel's shorter than I am. I know. He wasn't I, that I, much. Yeah. He's so, so powerful. But okay. Well, so, so wait yeah. a minute. Wait a minute. You guys were at the JUCOs. And then I want to talk – I want to talk – when those guys got to sell fights, like Daniel now is like kind of running his mouth at, at Stipe, but they're trying to sell fights. They're trying to sell fights, right? Yep. That's what they're doing. It's a business, right? That's all they're doing. It's a business. Like I don't yep. think there's any real ill will between those guys. Um, there might be. I don't know. But um, they're, sell, they're trying to sell fights. Yep. So, okay, junior college has changed a lot. Let's just get back to the junior college thing. Mm -hmm. um, who didn't win? T.J. Williams didn't win that year. In that, in, he was runner-up in that. So T.J. Williams is not on the on the, the the ten champions. He's not in there because he did, he was runner-up. Uh, he redshirted that year, but the year before that guy he was runner-up. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy, dude. That's crazy. crazy. I know. Yeah, okay. I mean, JUCO back in the day was I. I mean, I don't really. Mm, you know, I'm not in it like before, but from what I understand, you know, back in the day, uh, when I say that, when I wrestled in the late, early, mid 90s or early 2000, um, there was only one kind of JUCO league. And now it's kind of broken up into California JUCO. Yeah. And then yeah. maybe like the rest of the country JUCO. Yeah. I don't, so, last and have a team anymore? They do. I mean, I, I looked. They're just California. They just do the California junior college stuff. Yeah. You can only be yeah, that, you go to a JUCO in California. You can only be state champ. I believe so. Yeah, I think that's – no, I think that's what it is. And I yeah. think what they're trying to do with, like, North Idaho, they were trying to push them into some Washington league where mm -hmm. they would go to nationals. And then, obviously, Iowa Central is still really good. But, like, Neosho yep. – I think Neosho dropped and maybe brought back. It, yeah, it's, it's real weird. It's real weird. That's why it's hard to follow. You know, I, I looked at I'm so lucky, you know, being Juco back then. I mean, like you said, look at the guys on the poster, you know, how lucky um, back then. So, I and I remember our team, you know, our last in team when, you know, I was on it. And, you know, you had guys like TJ, uh, Reggie Wright, Shelton Benjamin. <laughs> Um, that was your team. <laughs> dude, that was your hey, team. <laughs> hold on. Uh, Jamil Kelly. Um, you know, I and I and it, dude, there was so many that came in there and, and it was unbelievable. You know, Rampage Jackson was on the team. Quentin Quentin Jackson was on your team? Yeah. Dude. Uh, Corey Hill, he was in the first Ultimate Fighter, like one of the first Ultimate Fighters, Corey Hill. I mean, there's, you name it. I mean, there's so many in there. But, and the funny thing is, I, I think I'm probably closer to them, you know, via older age Facebook type deal. And, you know, I, I 
chat with TJ and Reggie and, you know, those guys and stuff like that. I'm, I'm actually decent close to them, I would say, compared to, you know, some other people. I'd like to ask those guys. I'd like, I think you're the only one, like Jamil's a, a college coach, right? Like he, mm-hmm. Jamil's been at Stanford, Arizona State, a couple of different places, right? Obviously yep. he's a Olympic silver medalist. Um, but like, I'd like to ask those guys, hey guys, you know, Sonny Marchetti? Did any of you see Sonny Marchetti being a, a, an NCAA D2 head coach? I'd love, I'd love to just hear what they have to say because clearly, you know, dude, you had tunnel vision. You wanted to be an Olympic champion, world champion. You wanted to represent the United States. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, things come up, man. Life happens, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. You're, 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 mm-hmm. you're pulled in other different directions. Um, maybe yep. you start living the wrestling hobo lifestyle a little bit, right? Like, you know, you, you're running workouts here and there, and you're just mm-hmm. trying to make a living. Maybe you're doing a side job over here as a construction guy. I don't even, you know, I can't speak for you. But I think that's yep. what I see with a lot of these guys. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're, yeah. Right? Like, yeah. what did you do for – what did you do from 04 to, to – you got the job at Notre Dame? That's a good question. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, you know, I think I've always had pretty good self-awareness for myself as far as, like, long-term and where I'm at. Um, you know, even being what I would consider, you know, maybe in my 20s stuck in a position, you know, and just dealing with it. Um, I really always had a long vision of, you know, I'm gonna have a family and, um, you know, be successful in my own right. Uh, I didn't know, you know, where I'd go or what I would be doing, but, um, I knew I'd be involved in wrestling, uh, one way or another, cause you know, I think I'm pretty good at what I do, uh, and the people I'm with. So you know, what did I do? 2004, I did some mixed martial arts. You know, I did the UF, you know, not UFC, but uh, MMA for a little bit, coached. Uh, I was a head coach at Walsh Jesuit in 2004. So 2004 to 2006, I was Walsh Jesuit head coach right after Bill. Um, and that was fun. You know, that was awesome. Had really good experience. Uh, my coaches were Clint Musser and Jimmy Johnson. <laughs> you know, my brother, I mean, we had the, one of the best uh, high school coaching staffs around. Um, and that's where, like, Dave Rella, um, you know, was able to coach him and um, a lot of those guys. Mike so, Pasillo? Mike Pasillo? Oh, dude, Mike Pasillo. <laughs> Come on. I mean, that's, what I jumped, that's what I jumped into coaching, you know. And, so crazy. Uh, yeah, you know, I've done that. I've done uh, – Painting, you know, the things that I've done, painted, woodwork, uh, all that, I'm so glad that I did it because, you know, that's what I love to do now in my spare time, you know. That's awesome. Now, yeah. now you do it as like a hobby. I love it. Now it's like I do. Hobby. Like, yeah, I, I you it. know, make the house and, and now, you know, I love it. So I tried to all, I knew it was going to uh, all go down to my wrestling career or coaching, not wrestling, but coaching career in wrestling. And this is what I'm made to do. This is definitely what I'm made to do. And everything, you know, built around me, uh, it was involved in wrestling and, you know, all the sport a lot, but, you know, I wouldn't say wrestling is everything for me. Not, not at all. Well, now you got options, dude. Now, if you want to go do management, you mm-hmm. want to go do middle upper hand management. I and mean, obviously mm-hmm. you have strong leadership skills. You're driven. Mm-hmm. Now I think a lot of these places make you have a degree to get those jobs. Yes. And, and you forced, you willed yourself into getting degree as a full-time coach, full-time student, a father of two with a newborn uh, and a daughter. What's the age difference between the boy, boy and the girl? 10 years? Uh, my daughter's 11, almost 12. And my so son will be four. Yep. Yeah, it's seven, eight years apart, so it's like you got this gap between them, and you're juggling all this stuff. You're driving pretty far. You're trying to buy a house. You're doing all this. I drive stuff. an hour. Yeah, yeah, man. It's just like I don't know how people do it, and it's like it, now it sounds like you're really uh, thankful for the experiences as doing the manual labor stuff, working with your hands. Now you can do it, and, and if in five years you're like, I don't want to coach wrestling anymore. My body hurts real bad. You got out. Yep. Got options. Well, and that's 
you know, I feel lucky in a way too, in in a in a a good position. I, I believe better than most. You know, as far as my perspective, is being a head coach. So I'm I'm 42 years old and I'm a brand new head coach. To me, I'm the most dangerous coach out in wrestling right now because the knowledge that I have being in the sport for 42 years is just vast. And then the excitement I have at being a new coach is dangerous. <laughs> it's super dangerous, right? Because I'm excited to be what doing what I do. I'm a new coach as far as like head coach, but my uh, my drive and everything. So you know, a lot of those a lot of coaches get their first start at you know late twenties, early thirties um, type deal, and you know you know guys my age like uh, Kale. Sanderson, you know, he's been coaching, I think, 12, 13, 14, maybe longer, right, as yeah. a head coach? Yeah, yeah, he was one in 04 as a competitor, and they brought him on as an assistant coach in 04, 05, right? Yeah, so. Yep. Yeah, you're right. So, and then he, he re-came back in 2011, right, to wrestle? But, yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah. You know, so, I mean, I mean, not him as far as a comparable, because obviously he's, you know, excited every year because he's doing his thing every year. Uh, but, you know, like I said, I'm 42 and I'm, I'm excited to be a head coach and, and do my job every day to where a lot of people, I think, have 42, 45 and coaching. You know, they're starting to get that. Eh, you're starting to see a little of the other side. Yeah. So I think a lot of guys slack off, you know, and um, I'm excited to get new ideas. You know, I, I pump for new ideas every day uh, as far as myself and my coaching staff. Dude, my thing is, like, I look at you, you're like a wild man, like a bucking Bronco Mustang who had to, like, get all this madness out of him, you know? <laughs> and then, and then it, like, you, would you agree? Like, you, you, I don't know if you were ready in your, in your mid-20s and early. I don't, I don't know if you were ready. I wasn't. You no, I wasn't. And fight and do all this other stuff, right? I, I, that's why yeah. I, just like you're, you know, you're like starting to calm down almost. Kind of. <laughs> they went and watched you wrestle. <laughs> yeah. No, I, you know, calm down is, I, I, I would agree with that as far as like, uh, um, you know, controlling myself maybe. Uh, but as far as like, you know, I, I, I just think I'm lucky. So lucky, you know, compared to you know, others, a lot of others, just because I do have good energy and, you know, I look around at my age and I'm like, man, you know, um, I mean, I got good energy because I, you know, I get up and train every day. You know, my discipline is pretty tough, uh, pretty good, uh, I would say. And, you know, I want to make champions, you know, and I think I do know how to make champions. And, and I think, uh, just doing what, what we do. Sonny, why, why did you not go the Frankie Edgar route, the Gray Maynard route? Why, why, why was that? You, you were in a, were you NAAFS? What, what, what were you fighting in? What league? NAAFS. You were in NAAFS? I lost him. I'm trying to get it back. I'm going to get Sonny back here. We lost him. He must have hit it. Some MMA with him. I don't know if we can rejoin the meeting. We'll try to try and rejoin the meeting here with Sonny. Sonny, and uh, hopefully he's coming back. Trying to get him. Well, sometimes you get some tough technical difficulties here, folks. It's that's that's the name of the game.
I'm going to stay rolling here. I'll pop back in here soon. He's got some stuff going on. I love hearing the stories, man. This guy, he was on some of the all-time great junior college teams, all the great high school teams, the whole deal. Anthony Ralph, my guy, my guy, my guy. We'll, we'll, I'll splice the uh, video together, but we're going to get Sonny back in here. He's the guy. All right. Let's see if we got him. Yes. Let's admit him. Rookie Cookie. Hopefully, Rookie Cookie's back, man. You back in, Rookie Cookie? <laughs> yes, sir. All right. So, well, listen. I asked you the question. We cut. All the deals, I'll cut you into two parts here, or I'll merge the two together. Everything okay? It's commercial break. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Commercial break. Okay. So, listen. First off, who's Brookie Cookie? My daughter. Your daughter? Yep, Big old smile. Brookie. I love it. I love yeah. it. I know that you and my are our favorite things. I think I know I can speak for me. I can't really speak mm -hmm. for you. Mm -hmm. Being a dad's probably my favorite thing. Favorite thing in the world. So you asked a good question, I think, before the commercial break. Which yeah, was, yeah. But it's being you know what? I'll come back to NAFS, I promise. Yeah, it, no, I'm good. It is is uh being a dad your favorite thing. So you said, hey, you were a wild man in your 20s, right? Yeah. And what changed? What, what kind of changed uh, when you, you know, I type deal? That was it. Yeah. That, Having my child. Really? Right? That. Having, that's what changed. I knew, it, you know, it, to say it, it's like this. When my dad passed away, I was living right for me, but I, I, I was still, you know, it, it was a lonely time in a way. So I was still living, you know, without my dad. That's what it felt like. like yeah. I was living, but it was without him. So when, when I got married and I had a child, my daughter, Brooklyn, I would say it, dude, it reawoke me into like you know you can go to a dark place when you know bad things happen or you know unfortunate things happen you go to a bad place a little bit or you know not even a bad place but a dark place and then um this beautiful little girl comes out right and it's yours yeah and so it it, it you know it like gave me another life it really did. It, it gave me a life to like be good all the way around for. And that's what did it. And now. Rookie cookie you know, game changer is what you're saying. By far. My, my, the best thing that ever happened to me. Uh, and I think to answer your question, the best thing, right? So being an Olympian or, you know, winning some NCAA titles and things like that were my main goal, which at that age, it should be. Uh, and not doing that, but, you know, I'd say my biggest accomplishment isn't, uh, you know, or isn't my degree, you know, my biggest accomplishment is, you know, my two kids and my wife, you know, I, I believe I have a great family and from the top down, uh, wife being at the top, right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> top down. Um, all I ever wanted was, um, to stay in wrestling probably my whole life because I love the sport for me. It gives me energy, makes me feel good. Um, and then I'm able to help a lot of people, um, you know, just doing what I do uh, and knowing what I know and coming out of that, um, I love, you know, as far as coaching, 
wrestling's for me. The workout is all for me. The training and everything, that's, it's really all for me. I mean, I, I get excited of learning new things in wrestling um, for me, like adding to my toys. Um, and then giving is, uh, it, you know, is a reward that, you know, you only really know until, you know, you help those in the coaching and, and it's not necessarily your national champions at all. You know, it's hard, you know, a guy like Joey Davis, I, I feel like I gave a lot, but I don't know how much wrestling I really gave him. <laughs> yeah. I think Joey Davis is going to win where he went, wherever he went. I maybe. Do. I do too. I do too. But, you know, I think the difference is um, would he have made it four years anywhere else? Sure. And he's he, really the question. Did he finally, he finally graduated from Notre Dame College. Yes, that, he did. That, that's huge. That, that to me, like, you know, yeah. you know hey. he's face punching now, right? He's face kicking and face punching. And but he don't have to. He don't have to, exactly. He Joe doesn't will run have to. Correct. Yeah. He's, a, he's a very smart uh, guy. Joey's a super smart guy. Um, most people don't get the luxury to talk to him one-on-one -on -one or hang out with him for a full night. And I think anybody that does, you know, sees the professional um, intelligence that he does have, you, you know. No? Well, I'm Hi, there. buddy. It's Thomas. Thomas is a piece of work. Hey. Tom! Tom, get in here. Come on, Thomas. I see all your YouTube stuff or your Facebook stuff. Now, did you go to uh, Chagrin Falls, Thomas? Yeah, Thomas Thomas loves Sugar and Falls. His brother really loves it. Hey, we were at uh Euclid Creek yesterday. Are you yeah? We were there. Yeah. We were, Dude, you, you go to some so so yeah, you say I, I got some inspiration. you got some inspiration from me, but uh I definitely get inspiration from you too, Zeb. You know, being a father of, of young children and and you know, knowing you know, I can remember sitting next to you at the Ohio State tournament when I believe I was just the head coach at Walsh. And you were there, I think, just starting, um, you know, with the interview and, and flow and, and things like that. And I sat next to you. So, I mean, just talking. And I don't think we, we definitely didn't have kids back then. Um, but to now. So it's like, man, we knew each other back then, you know. Uh, and now, you know, with the kids and stuff, and, you know, I see that even your house, you know, you, you made a nice home for your, for your family. Um, yeah. You got a real nice house down there in Brimfield, dude. Yeah, I'm lucky. You know, to be honest, all I ever wanted was a couple uh, national championships uh, and, a, <laughs> and a nice house. I, I, my entire life, I just wanted to live in a nice house of my own. But you do. And, uh, you have a bunch of national championships. You've won. You've won the JUCOs, right? You won the JUCOs. You won the Junior Nationals, right? You guys were national champions of the team at Walsh. So you've yep. won a bunch of national titles. Maybe you didn't win NCAA titles, but okay. Why? What was the fork in the road with uh, with with fighting? NAAFS, why are you not a professional face puncher? Because mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're uh, ability level, driven, all of it. You're, you know, you, NAAFS is the league Stipe started in. Correct. Jessica, I. Yeah, I mean. Uh, Stipe and. She lives uh, out there, Jason. doesn't she? She lives in Portage County, doesn't she? She's from Portage County. Yeah, yeah she's Rootstown, from Rootstown, right? Rootstown, Yeah. But uh, I believe she lives in, uh, well, I know she lives in Vegas now. Yeah, she moved to Vegas, but she's she's so, County. Yeah, she is, and I help train her a little bit, you know, for um, like three fights. Uh, train her pretty, you know, pretty good there. But uh, why why am I not? That's a good question. Um, I struggled with that internally, you know, for a long time. Not struggled, but it, it's not what I was supposed to do. I mean, I got all the skills all the skills. Um, I remember, you know, fighting the NWFS when 
you know, Uriah Faber was real big in the WEC. And the way I looked at it, Thomas you know, was, was, you know, it was probably be me and Uriah Faber, the two baddest at that time. I wasn't on that level as far as stardom or anything, but uh, I think ability, I definitely had that ability. Why didn't I? I would say backing, support, and probably my last little bit of screw you to the establishment, right? Kind of that last little, I'm going to do it by myself. I don't need anybody, and I don't want anybody's help. And, uh, you know, finishing out my 20s, you know, I think I just had to learn that. And I, I went from basically 16 years old to about 26 of me. And I didn't really care what people thought or did or, you know, I was, I'm always a good person. You know, I don't think there's too many people out there, hopefully say like, hey, you know, he's just not a good person. Um, I mean, I, I, I believe I'm a good person. Uh, you know, first thing I try to do is get up and pray and uh, before I go to bed and, you know, so those old fashioned, you know, things I've always carried, but, <clears throat> you know, my persona, maybe out to the public for those 10 years were, you know, I really didn't need anybody. I didn't want anybody. And I think that was just uh, an aftermath, you know, from my father. Uh, and and how that went and then when I met my wife um Tiffany and and you know thought okay I, I can't be like this I, I want to you know get married and and things like that and I got to give to her uh, you know more than I'm gonna give to myself and you know I gotta shut my mouth <laughs> too uh when you know I could have just been talking uh and, and backed it up so I learned a lot from that and she taught me a lot. So, and then our child, you know, Brooklyn and, and now Jagger. So yeah, from, you know, for those 10 years, it was, you know, I, I think if somebody would have picked me up, you know, and, and they tried, it was just a little too late. Dan Henderson actually uh, reached out to me uh, after my last fight and uh, Team Quest. Uh, out there and I was getting ready to walk into the CBCA wrestling room and, and, and get a workout and I'm sitting in the parking lot and Dan Henderson and uh, another coach called me three-way and and actually you know invited me out to Oregon and uh, at the time and and the train out there with Team Quest and and all them and I had to deny it you know I said I man <laughs> this is, must be my luck because, you know, I can't do it. Uh, my wife at the time was three months pregnant. And I said, you know, and I, I talked to her and she told me to go. She actually said, go. She goes, because I don't want to be with you and have you sit here 10 years later saying, hey, I regret it. You should have did that. I should have went. So it was ultimately my decision. and. Uh, I decided, I, I believe, to stay and grow up and, 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 and be an adult <laughs> more, right? Yeah. As they say. Um, so, sorry, my wife's okay. scooping old Thomas up here. Oh, no, you're good. Uh, we got the same house. <laughs> so, here's my favorite thing. You have, like, zero regrets about that. That's what I love. I have zero. I love it. Because, like, so zero. many people, like, I have no regret. A professional face puncher, and there's not – I don't know if there's any more who – a person who's more built for it than you. I agree. I agree. And, I, I mean, to be honest, I boxed uh, this morning. You know, boxing, like I told you, when I was 16 and, and my father passed away, and I was kind of on this high journey, right? In high school, I was doing pretty good, and I was, you know, being praised. And, uh, you know, that was early 90s, and Mike Tyson was still – you know, top dog. And so I, I kind of wanted to be like that, you know, like the Mike Tyson. And I, I believe I kind of was. And then, uh, you know, I just didn't have the money or backing. <laughs> and then, so I like that you don't have any regrets about it. And I, I, you know, I don't hear like you talk about fighting all the time. You're not like some guy who's like super into 
following and jockeying the UFC, even though that you're, you're, you can still go train with those guys is the crazy thing about it. Cause you, you I got, trained last, right. You went out and trained with Joey, didn't you? Yeah. I trained with AJ McKee, Joey Davis, um, um, you know, tone, the head coach, uh, AJ's father, uh, Mr. McKee and quite at like 50 something, didn't he? Like two or three years ago. Dude, he took me down. Hey, he hit me with a dump. So I went out there. I, I trained with the 185 Bellator champ. Um, thought I did okay with him and, you know, trained with Joey and AJ McKee. Um, trained with those guys, sparred a little bit with those guys, definitely wrestled. And then, um, and then uh, Tone, the head coach of Body Shop, um, I was like, hey, let's roll. <laughs> you know, and he's 52, 50, yeah. you know, 51 years old. Is his kid still undefeated? His kid's undefeated, right? And and Joey's undefeated. Yep. So oh. me and him rolled. Yeah, I, just, I got a great experience out there. I mean, my goal is to be able to roll. You know, I, I still watch Dan Gable and see what he's doing at his old age. And uh, that's my goal is to be able to hit punching bags when I'm, you know, 65. Um, get up I, and, when, and kind of resort back to what my coach said. Hey, you know, as a freshman in high school said, hey, you know, you're going to be a wrestling bum. But not in that way, not in the bums uh, way, more of the uh, back then it was kind of like the Dave Schultz, the Schultz. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, the bum is the, wrestling for a living train yeah. into their 30s and even their 40s I, yeah. I feel bad because when we say wrestling bum and i say wrestling hobo i'm not saying I, people who are losers that's not what i'm saying i'm not saying people who are drug addicts people who are felons that's not what i'm saying what not I'm at all no. is these are people that like they're as john stutzman says pow's prisoners of wrestling these are people who cannot get away from the sport and I don't think it's a negative. I'm not – it feels like it's derogatory. It can be. Say it. it can be, yeah. It, it can, can be. be. But, um, you know, I, at the I same think time, that they, you didn't do that, though. You, you took another path. You took another path when you in your late 30s with two kids. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, you're you, – because you, you – to be the head coach at Notre Dame College, you got to have a degree. I guess we should have – that's a barrier. Yeah. That's a barrier yeah. in all the NCAA in, institutions. To be any paid coach that's not volunteer, you have to have a degree. You got to have a four-year yeah, degree. A lot of institutions as well, you got to have a master's as well. Not oh, even gosh, just a, Yeah. Uh, you know, being there, and luckily I started as a volunteer, you know, eight years ago. Uh, started as a volunteer position, and then uh, I moved up to a, a full-time position, second assistant, yeah, and then uh, head assistant. And now head coach, um, you know, coming off the street more, I don't think a lot of people would have that uh, ability to do, uh, one, not have a degree in going to coach. And two, you know, some of them can't even go into coach uh, just with a bachelor degree. Um, but, uh, yeah, you know, just fortunate. Who fortunate. Brought Who brought you in? How did the connection start with Notre Dame College with you? Who brought you in? Anthony? one of the guys on the team, who brought you in? How did you make the connection with Notre Dame College? Well, I think my light bulb went off. I know when my light bulb went off, it, it was uh, Nate Skenesny was going to Iowa, right? So uh, his dad, Mark, uh, called me up and he's like, hey, uh, what are you doing Friday kind of gig? You want to uh, go with me uh, up to Iowa and take Nate? up to school and I was like yeah you know that'd be awesome uh and I, at the time I was working landscaping so I was working landscaping at the time got off work on that Friday went with Mark and Nate uh to Iowa um and dropped him off at the dorms for for the uh, orientation deal uh sat so I then went into uh Tom and Terry Brands's office talked with those guys a little bit and uh, that's when my light bulb went off. To be honest, I uh, looked at Tom and, at his office, 
and I'm looking around and I'm just seeing how he interacts. And when I left there in my own head, I go, I can do that. I can do that. I can do that. Not that what they're doing, but as a, as far as a head coach, I could, I can coach, I can do this. Um, so I went home, worked next the following week. Uh, my loophole was a guy named uh, Garrett Linton that I helped coach a little bit at Richtown High School. And then he went to uh, Notre Dame. So at work, I call up Garrett Linton and I said, hey, what's, uh, you know, uh, who's your, what's the coaches up there? I, I know them, but, you know, what's, what's their numbers? You know, Anthony Ralph gave me Anthony's number. I didn't have it at the time. And, and uh, Frank, you know, Romano. So I said, all right, give me Coach Romano's phone number as well. I kind of know him a little bit. And I know how, you know, he's a pretty smart guy. So if somebody's going to know how to coach in college, it would probably be Frank Romano. So he gave me uh, Frank's phone number. And, you know, as I'm raking, I call up Frank. You know, Frank, Sonny Marchetti, how you doing? And ask them a simple question. Coach, how do I become a college coach? What do I got to do? And he's like, well, you got to get a degree and boom, boom, boom. And, you know, kind of went through some stuff. And I was like, all right, uh, sounds good. Appreciate it. Got off the phone, called my wife and said, hey, you know, what's that online school? Online of Phoenix, Arizona, or, you know, online Phoenix, yeah. right? So we started looking into that. Uh, I started looking in being – you know, at that time in my 30s, and I had a, a family uh, just starting. So I'm like, man, I should probably you know, get college for cheap at this point, take out some loans and go that route. Well, it was that night when Anthony Ralph called me and he's like, Sonny, dude, do you want to coach here? And I'm like, yeah, let's do it. I go, what do I got to do? And he said, well, you know, uh, let me talk, but I think I can get you in. And I was like, all right, cool. So he's like, uh, I was like, well, what's the pay? Cause I was, I didn't want to, you know, landscape anymore. <laughs> and he's like, you know, probably about 35. And I was like, okay, got off the phone. I was like, all right, hon, you know, it's going to be about 35. I could probably do that. I'll work some money on the side or, you know, train and this and that. So I could, you know, make some money and, and do that. So then talk to Anthony the next day, and uh, he's like, no, that was 3500 <laughs> <laughs> And you're a volunteer. <laughs> he's like, you're a volunteer, and it's only 3500 And then you know how uh, that goes. And that gets dropped down because you're a volunteer when you're actually paid out. It's about 2000 <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so I was like, you know what? This is my only in. I'm going to have to stay landscaping and volunteer and, and do that. So I was able to do that. I worked, volunteered, and did construction. And, um, you know, there was a full-time open job when uh, Jake Pataxel left. And I was in. So I went from there. Dude. Yeah. You did a full – how long did you do a full-time manual labor job and then go wrestle in the afternoon? How long did you do that for? Ooh. Ooh. In my 30s. You know, that was all the way into my 30s. I remember Garrett Weinberger. Uh, so, yeah, Garrett Weinberger. So I was 36 because we were jogging at practice and I was jogging with him at the beginning of practice. All right, start jogging. I'm jogging and Garrett Leinberger, uh, you know, he's, he's out stretching, he's holding, he's slowing things up. So I go over to him and I'm like, Hey, let's go, dude, pick it up. You know, let's go. And he's like, hold on, man. I'm getting, you know, I'm kind of beat up. I go, how old are you? And he's like, I'm 18. I said, well, what's double that. Now get the heck, you know, I said some different words, but now get the freak up and run, dude. I was like, that's how old I am. 
double your age, and that's how old I am. Let's go. You're so old, he got up. Dad. You're old enough to be his dad. I love it. Yeah, so uh, I would say I probably did that. Uh, last year was my first year I did not. Because of head coach, I knew I'd make my change over. So it was kind of a bittersweet in my head. I knew my my throw the sweatpants on with the team and jog with the team, you know, and kind of go through the vibe is is kind of coming to a final end of my life. And uh, you know, I'm gonna have to direct the ship. And I love it. You know, I've learned a different way. I've tried to research what a lot of coaches do talk to a lot of coaches because I got to get mine out too. You know, I, I don't think I'll never not be able to get mine out. So, you know, guys like uh, Jim Miller, right. From Warburg. Um, I had a luxury of uh, talking with him for a little bit at a leadership committee. Uh, guys like that, obviously Dan Gable and um, you know, guys, my age, like Carol Sanderson, I try to find as many videos on him coaching as I can even though there aren't very many. There's not very many videos of that guy coaching. No, and I've tried to research everything I can. Uh, so, you know, from him to, uh, you know, the uh, best football team out there, you know, the Patriots and uh, Tom Brady, right? Tom Brady's 40, 41? Oh, no, Tom Brady's older than that, dude. He's 42. So what am I doing? So he still jogs with his team. Yeah. Why the heck can I jog He's with my team? He's not the head coach, though. <laughs> huh? He's not the head coach, though. No, now I can't. He's no, playing. no. He's playing no. rounds. Um, okay. Right. So, so just real quick, your brother John. Mm -hmm. Your brother John was a state champ for North Kent Hoover, right? Correct. 91. 91. Mm -hmm. And how much – was John seven years, six years older than you? About seven. Close to seven years, yeah. John did a non-traditional thing. Where did he go right out of the gate? Did he go to Tri-C? Where did he go right out of, out of high school? Minnesota. So he went to Minnesota right out. And, okay. John yeah. had this crazy journey, and then he came back as a 30-year-old and won the NCAA. Yeah. He was 30 years old, and he won the NCAA yeah. for Augsburg, right? Yes. And it's kind of like, I don't know if a lot of non-traditional students have done what John Marchetti's done. No, not a lot at all. You know, I mean, just to go back to school, uh, it's tough enough, like you said, at that. And uh, then to compete uh, is another, you know, animal altogether. So, yeah, I, I think our family, you know, I, you know, I never looked at it like that until maybe you just said that. But, you know, I think there is, as a whole, the, the guys, you know, in my family, uh, probably had about a seven, eight year, I would say a hard run just because, uh, you know, our, our father passing, uh, so young and that direction, right? I mean, you got my older brothers, I got two older brothers. I'm the youngest in the family and, um, everybody was kind of like, not sure what's going on. He was so, you know, prevalent in our family, right? as the dad of the home. Uh, yeah, I, I think we all kind of just took a different route. And then, you know, probably about six, seven years later, kind of woke up again and was like, all right, well, he won't want that. Uh, my family won't want that. And, uh, you know, it's never too late. So I'm done feeling sorry for myself. I'm done, you know, uh, you know, taking my life maybe the other direction when, you know, the whole time I know what I got to do in the right direction. So if I know what to do in the right direction, it's just time for me to follow it. And, you know, like I said, for me, it was, you know, me, my wife and, um, you know, having my kids. Is John, you and John are still pretty close. John still comes and hangs out at the house and mm -hmm. you live in like Akron or something like that. Yep. Yep. So, and he yeah, so yeah, we're super close. You know, we've always been close. Um, you know, especially after my dad, he was my main coach, uh, all the way through. And, um, you know, and, and we've had a lot of great times too, even when I went out the last and, um, he actually went out there as well and was coaching and then got picked up. So that's, that's how he got picked up. Uh, that's, that's a crazy story, which is oh, we're out at last. 
Augsburg was re so we're out at last and in California. My brother is there as a GA or not GA, but uh, uh, you know, a volunteer coach. And then uh, Augsburg coach Jeff Swenson called looking for a 25 pounder, and Jose Sanchez, our 25 pounder that was a national champ for us uh, that year. Uh, so I wasn't the only national champ from last and uh, on that card our 25 pounder pinned in the finals Jeez. uh but yeah he, he's a tough dude so uh and i just spoke to him the other day it was, it was pretty cool so but he's out there and augsburg coach calls and says hey you know what's going on with jose and look for 25 and they said hey uh we got another 25 you might want to consider and you know he, he's coaching out here and, and that was my brother John was smaller than you. Is that was small? He was a weight. I didn't realize that. Yeah. What did he win? Yeah, he's at thirty-three. I was gonna say, yeah, he didn't win it at twenty-five, right? No. So he was always a weight class or two smaller, you know, than me. But um, yeah, he got picked up there, and you know, went to Augsburg and you know, won a national title that next year. Did he get a degree? Did John did no. ever get a degree? No. No, so he stayed there, got a, won a national title, um, and I believe he's got probably a little more than a semester last time we talked um, to finish his degree, which he's an art major. I think you can be an artist without a degree. I'm not going to lie to you. Right. I'm, yeah, he. I'm sorry. <laughs> for real. And, and he is, uh, you know, really good, really smart with – you know, electronics and, and all types of stuff. I mean, he comes in, hooks up my surround sound, and um, he just brought a, a go-kart over the house. Just what you want for your four-year-old son, three-year-old son. It, we already ripped the wheel off. We were flying down the road, and the wheel fell off. <laughs> but, yeah, we do stuff like that. He, he, don't have any, he doesn't have any kids, so he kind of, you know, lives through mine, which is, which is cool. But, you know, some of the things he brings over for them, you know, they're, you know, they're a little bit too old. Uh, hey, the is, things he, are. Is, is John Marchetti the Funkel? Yeah. Is he the fun uncle? Yeah. I was that for a really long time, Dom. My nieces and nephews, I was the Funkel, I thought. Yeah. No, he is. He, he does. Uh, he builds also. You, know, you ever see those whizzers and uh, the bicycles that have the two strokes and all yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we fly around with those. That's our that's our fun gig, dude. Uh, okay, I a question I've been having, and like what I I saw the picture of the old the '97 Walsh team posted. Mm -hmm. And would you guys have six finalists, five champs? Yep. And most and you guys were national champs, and most people consider that one of the greatest teams ever in the history of Ohio. Mm -hmm. Do you still have contact with those guys? Yeah. And uh, Heskett. Well, go ahead. And, you know, what's that contact like? And what was it like being on a team like that? Uh, Contact-wise, you know, Heskett, um, you know, my heart goes out for him. Mm, it just, uh, for him and his family right now, uh, just having a stroke and, and battling through that. So, uh, yeah, talking with them, I, I can't really talk, uh, reach out and, you know, uh, touch on that and we just had our 20 year reunion last year i believe or two years ago maybe now yeah uh yeah two years ago uh had our reunion and you know was able to really see though everybody in person jeff nup and and everybody so that was really neat um yeah i mean we keep in contact on different medias uh you know me and hesket are Probably, I would say a little more closer than some of the guys just because of wrestling still. Yeah. Uh, so we try He's to talk. In Ohio, about, you're in Ohio. Yep. Where's wait, uh, isn't Jeff Nup in like Texas? Texas, yep. He is he's pretty much like an oil tycoon in, in Texas. Yeah. And where's Brad Byers at? So I believe he's in North Carolina. He's in North Carolina. Yeah, where's so Vic? He, Vic in New York City? Vic is everywhere. Vic. He was out in Colorado. I think he still lives out in Colorado, unless he moved to New York. 
Is he still doing? Is he, he was a movie producer. Is that what he's still doing? The last thing, and then I think he was singing. I think he's he's got like a music group. Dick, Dick, Dick's a different. He's a different cat. Different cat. So, what was it like? Uh, normal. It was normal. I think maybe from the outside it might not look normal, but we were all a bunch of, you know, we we just like a melting pot, right? I mean, I was originally a North Canton uh, guy and, and then came in there, but, you know, I grew up through North Akron, so I was right in the mix right away. Um, you know, Brad Byers came from Hudson, uh, I believe his senior year, um, and, you know, Vic Sveda, uh, he came from uh, Hudson too, right? Or... Where's Vic from? Woodridge. 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 Is that right? Uh, yeah. So he came. So when when Vic came in, I was his drill partner. What? Yeah. I beat the living crap out of Vic every day. Vic every day. 15. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. I wrestled with him every day. And then my buddy, my college roommate, the oddball, the, the 500 wet dog sophomore, Nate Doggerty. Dude, he, was, he, he has the worst record for a state finalist still to this day did you know that no nate was 16 and 14 and he made the state finals wow did you know yeah, that nate no i didn't know that nate was 500 no. dude he beat the ravenna guy in the semis he That's wants right. the quarters to go 500 and then he wrestled uh james holmes 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 holmes, holmes right Beat the defending champ in the semis. Yeah. And then he wrestled, he like, I forget. He was 500 in the finals. He was 16. He was uh, 16 and 13 going to the state finals, and then he lost. He was 16 and 14 on the year. You know, for me, I only can, you know, probably talk for me, which is, you know, when it, my experience there, I, I was still a, a loner kind of person, which means – now, even on the team, I really didn't, uh, I don't want to say associate, but, you know, I, I did my thing in a wrestling room, in a practice room, and, you know, outside the wrestling room, you know, I was, I don't think those guys hung out with me, <laughs> uh, you know, too much. So, do you, think, do you think, okay, so here's the, here's the million dollar question. Do mm -hmm. you think as you're into being a dad, and the quote unquote loner, wild man, lost person. Do you think all this stuff stems from your dad dying? Do you think that, that like the losing your dad as a 15 year old, a 16, mm -hmm. the 16th birthday, do you think that that's where it all stems from? Now you're all in on being a dad. You're, you were a loner and you couldn't figure things out for 10, 12 years of your life. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's what it all stems from? I think so. I really do because, uh, you know, me and him were really close. Uh, grown up, right, to to almost 16 years old, and you know you're you're kind of I, I was kind of at a, you know, you know, not at the peak, but I believe I was pushing the peak uh, of becoming a really top wrestler in the country. Um, you know, wrestling Guerrero in the finals, and I went to all the Cadet World Team trials, and you know, stuff like that, and then. Uh, yeah, when he passed away, there was a huge void uh, in my life, at, in the home, too. And then uh, Walt Talarczyk, you know, retired and, and left and went to North Carolina. So, yeah, you know, there was a uh, – I think from there I took a lot of lonely time that I don't think many kids did uh, back then. I mean, I remember sleeping in my car in the Walsh parking lot. Uh, you know, in training. I mean, I did those things. You know, I'd hear stories of what, you know, college guys were doing when I was in high school, and I kind of had the ability not being, uh, you know, under watchful parents at the time that I could kind of do what I needed to do or do what I wanted to do. So I would do stuff like that. You know, I remember waking up, like I said, I'd park in a parking lot at Walsh Jesuit by myself and then wake up 5.30, 6 in the morning, 
and uh, go hit the stadium steps at Walsh Jesuit, you know, and I'd fill my book bag full of books to make it heavy, and I would do the stadiums. And then I would bring out the uh, track and field equipment and then try to do workouts there. And then I'd go in when the school opened, I'd go into the locker room, into the football locker room, take my shower, and then go to class. And I did that regularly uh, to where my coaches, you know, told me, be careful, you know, don't overtrain. And uh, I was just, you know, I, I just kind of, that's where I think myself, you know, was like, all right, I'm in this, not by myself, but my wrestling journey now is me. I make the decisions and it, I could have easily chose not to, <laughs> you know, uh, really not having any, um, you know, buddy like that to tell me different. So, but I think I just told myself I could either, I don't know. I, I really didn't tell myself. It was more of this is the direction I'm going. I still can be the best. I can still, you know, uh, compete at the best. It, it was more of the other stuff that I think I needed at the time, which is the back, you know, stuff. Uh, not just being the competitor, but people behind the scenes uh, that help, right? You can, I mean, just because the tiger is in the show, you got handlers to make sure the tiger is in the show. I don't think the tiger can set up the show and do the show and then leave. And that's kind of what I was, I was at. So you're, you're this unbridled wild man in your 20s. How'd you yep. never get in like big trouble? No felonies or how did, how did you avoid all that, man? Uh, like I said, you know, so having them pass early too, I think was a, maybe a, I, the one I take as a benefit is, you know, him passing early. I've always had him everywhere, everywhere. You know, I have my dad and, you know, I think I'm a um, spiritual person like that to where, you know, uh, I believe I've been a pretty good person and, and that's, you know, number one. So I, I knew I'd be okay. I just didn't know how in the heck I was going to do anything. <laughs> you know, I, I knew I'd God and, you know, I read the Bible and, you know, I knew good things were going to come. It was just how long is am I going to endure it and bear it until the fruits of the labor kind of come through? And, and it took a long time <laughs> and still going. But, uh, yeah, not getting in trouble. A lot of close calls. Uh, a lot of close calls. Not, not big ones, but, you know, a lot of close calls. Uh, and then uh, the wrestling community, right, just surrounding myself at any facet with the wrestling community. I mean, if I'm at a wrestling tournament or training, which I, I've done, um, I'm not out, you know, doing whatever. So, yeah. And then when my, you know, daughter was uh, born and, and my wife, that settled me down a whole lot to where, you know, I, I mean, I, I probably drink once, twice a year. Wow. <laughs> and, and that's probably been for the last 10 years of my life. Where, where did you go? You went from Lassen to Iowa State, right? Where did you go? What was your path? Oh yeah, yeah. I'm I'm sorry. I went from Lassen. Uh, we're we're going. We're if you if this were a timeline and people were watching it, it'd be all over. We're all over. After right? Lassen, after you're a junior college national champ, I went to Iowa State. Yes. Did you compete two years in JUCO? Did you do three years in JUCO? What'd you do in JUCO? Uh, just one. My freshman year, true freshman year. I wrestled Juco, excuse me, and uh, able to win it. And then the next year I redshirted. So and you were then, at Lassen and then you were out after two years. Yep, yep. Went to Iowa State, competed for them uh, in 2000. And then, uh, you know, I think that was my, you know, like you said, how, how did you not break or, you know, something like that. I think that was my breaking point when I was at Iowa State. And, and I, and you really needed the next level of either support, finance, um, you know, that's what I needed. And, you know, 
Division One is a different animal in a way. Uh, so being as young as I was, you know, I was, and I was lucky to have, you know, guys like Kel Sanderson on my team, uh, seeing a lot of things that he had and, and, and did and, and the support, you know, what always struck me, but it was, I tell you what, this was a hard, this was real hard was after practice at Iowa state coming downstairs to the locker room, walking out of the locker room and guys like, uh, you know, Kale, you know, his mom and dad were sitting on the bench waiting for him, getting ready to take him out to dinner or, you know, whatever. Um, and I just remember, you know, talking with them high and everything. And I'm just like, man, you know, none of these people have a clue. And I've never told anybody. This is the first time I ever told anybody. But I'm like, man, you have a, you guys have no clue. I wrestled your son and my dad died that same hour. So wild, man. So You know what I'm saying? And in my head, as I walk out, I have a feel sorry for me attitude and, and, and like, like, dude, how lucky. And, and, and not putting it on him like, ah, look at you. It was more of like, good. That's what parent, that's, that's awesome. Like, that's awesome. So that's, you know, that was a couple of times in my life where I took snapshots. That was one of them. And I'm like, man, man, I would love to have that. So right? now you have kids that are like that. You have guys on your team who mm -hmm. have no, they don't have either parent, right? Yeah, no. I, I, yep, what's exactly. That, what's that like? You can't be a, you got these two kids who you're the actual father to. You can only yep. be dad to so many kids, right? Yeah, <laughs> uh, but I'll take them all. <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll take them all. Um, and I think that's probably what carries me and my excitement, you know, and, and my true passion and motivation. Wrestling, you know, like I said, it's for me as far as learning new tactics and things like that. I still get a personal gratitude of, of uh, learning new stuff, uh, the grappling, the jujitsu or, or whatever. Uh, but as far as taking care of human beings in college, um, that's probably what I love the best. It's because that's right. What you don't have is what you, uh, you want to give. So I wasn't able to have that. And, you know, I have kids like that on my team and, you know, that's what, you know, that's what fuels me. I love it. For instance, Emilio Fowler is a kid on my team that just graduated. Uh, he was a starter on and off. Uh, never really hit the, the final starting spot, you know, going into regionals, nationals, but was always in there, always in the mix. Uh, came to Notre Dame and um, self-driven guy. You know, he, he's got a mom and I'm not sure where his father is, uh, but it kind of maybe a similar situation, right? And I see this kid and he's a good, humble kid, works hard, shows up to everything. And, uh, you know, summertime when I drive up there, most people are going home. You know, I see him past Beachwood Mall running with headphones on in the summer by himself. And he's a loner, too. So talk with him and things like that. And, um, you know, a kid like that graduated this past uh, March. And he was so upset. His senior year, he was he was deemed the starter until, uh, you know, Alonzo uh, decided to bump up at the end, had a final wrestle off, took a spot. So he's a senior. Cause one time to get on the stage, he got bumped out in the final wrestle off. And uh, I mean, this kid's no punk kid either, you know, comes from, uh, I would say the streets more, uh, you know, Kansas He's from Kansas. And, uh, we had a practice after that, you know, it was a real early wrestle off, final wrestle off like nine in the morning and practice at 12 on a Saturday or a Sunday. Well, that kid was at the 12 o'clock practice after he lost his senior year, uh, his wrestle off. He was at practice at 12, head down, pissed off, but he was there on time. 
uh, and then showed up to every practice after that to help the team. He was at our last practice on time. And, uh, you know, I really don't get too emotional when, you know, any of our guys win a national title. Um, you know, I, I don't know. Uh, I've been in lucky to been in a lot of those chairs, so maybe that helps. But a kid like this, you know, I did, you know, and and I told him if if we could do awards this year, which we can't, you know, I'd give him my own personal award, which is a Man of Honor award, in which I think is higher than any award that I could give at Notre Dame, most improved or you know national champion, best wrestler, or whatever. Man of Honor award means. You honored yourself, you honored your family, you honored the team, and you uh, you did everything. So I gave that to him, and and he's a kid that I, I told him, I said, man, I look up to you. You know, you did something I didn't do. And, you know, I was probably in a similar position, and, I, could, I you know, I didn't do it. And for, you know, somebody like you to come into a program five years, wrestled for five years, go to college, and I believe he graduated with above a 3.0. He sent money home to his mom at, from doing work study. That's what it's all about, man. Like, what you're saying about him, like the guy getting the degree, maybe Dude, you know, I, the starter. Mm, but those are the guys that people – I get chills, dude. I get about. chills. Those are the people that I want to, like, that I want to do wrestling media for. Those are the people whose stories I want to tell. Those are the people oh. that I want told, like, like you're saying, everybody wants to see uh, Kale Sanderson coach. Everybody right. wants to see him what you, when he used to wrestle. They want to see how he trained, right? He yep. doesn't allow a lot of access. But mm -hmm. not a lot of people are talking about this guy. Was it mm -hmm. a follower? 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 Fowler. F-O-L or F-O-W-L-E-R. Emilio Fowler. Um, from Kansas. From Kansas. And, uh, you know, uh, his heart was broken because he wasn't able to wrestle, you know, on that level or on the national tournament. And I'm like, man, I'm over here almost crying because <laughs> I'm more proud of you than anybody. Did you tell you know? one of the guys? Did you like, what did you, did you tell the guy? Do they get yeah. it? Do you think they get it? It's tough, you know, all you're 19, all you want to do is be a national champ. So it's probably tough for them to uh, conceive of the full perspective of that. But, you know, one of the hardest things to do, I believe, is go to college and wrestle and, and go to school and graduate, all within the same whole thing. Yeah, but what um, about being a dad, coaching, getting a degree? I think that's – I think – and then doing all the practices and doing everything everybody else is doing. I think that's the hardest thing you can do. Uh, yeah. Nah. I think I it's the know. hardest thing you can do already, man. I don't think that there's, like, a lot. You know, like, obviously going off the war, okay. okay. Right, right. Kids going to the D-Day who are getting off June well, 1944. I, I, right, okay. But I, I definitely got some, you know, goals ahead of me in coaching that, you know, what's the hardest thing? Um, you know, it's not too easy winning a college national championship uh, as a team. And I've had the luxury of being on those and coaching as well. But, you know, as being the head coach and kind of being your program, uh, there's only three a year in NCAA that are crowned. <laughs> and you only have one per division, right? So, uh, you know, it, I was in control of me. And I think when I'm in, you know, when I'm in control of me, I, I get all my stuff done. So it's not too hard just because it's my daily basis. But I think it's harder to control the uncontrollables and uh, ultimately get all those people doing that same thing. That's tough. Uh, you know, we're built to get up and go to war, uh, especially I believe our time frame and our era uh, of, of, you know, of who we are at 40s and plus. Uh, you know, I, I know you get up and you either with your kids or doing something, you know, uh, you know, working on your house and- Something, you know, I'm doing something. I just don't lay around all day. We go do something. I got correct. noon with kids. Uh, Sonny, yep. you know, speaking, yep. you said there's three titles given away a year. 
right? Mm -hmm. is. None this year. Yep. Talk me through that. Talk me through the Thursday, because you guys are a Friday, Saturday championship. You're in South Dakota this year. Mm -hmm. You guys found out Thursday before. You guys were all out in South Dakota ready to make weight. Yeah, we flew you out. Went, your, your NCAA tournament's canceled. Where was Sonny <laughs> Marchetti? And where were, would you have eight qualifiers, seven qualifiers? What'd you guys have? Uh, seven, right? Seven qualifiers. So we had uh, seven qualifiers. So but, we. Uh, you're going to make a run at the team title. Your heavyweight's going to win it probably. 84, 84, or 97. Uh, Vizzetti, which, what weight's he? 84. 84. That guy's going to make a run. Okay. So our, uh, up and down the lineup, you've got at least two to four guys that can win, win. Not like, eh, that's a bit of a stretch, Zeb, but in D2, you got two to four guys every year who can win it. Yeah. Hunter Bray, I believe, had a real good Hunter shot. Hunter Bray, well. there you go. 133 pounder, right? Like he, Ta Taylor Masuna took out the number one guy in the country in regionals. Trey Grind took him out yeah. seven to two. You guys got guys two to I said it two to four we're guys. Coming. We're coming. We were not going there. Win. Yeah, we were going to win. We yeah, were going you to win the whole tournament. Win. You won. Was twenty eighteen or twenty seventeen the year you guys won? It was kind of like oh, I don't know if we were yeah. supposed to win, but you won, right? Yeah. What and that was kind of our. What was your that was kind of our mind. That was kind of our mindset going into uh, the past season as well. We left on a Wednesday. Flew out on Wednesday, got there, you know, worked out. And then uh, Thursday, uh, Thursday I had all types of meetings. Uh, but we set up our workout, I believe, at like 1 o'clock. So get there. I had a meeting at noon. Uh, did the meeting at noon. Went okay. Uh, and then came out, seeing the guys starting to practice. I had to go into a 2 o'clock meeting and then a 3 o'clock. So that's where the coaches have the meetings. But so in our final meeting, three o'clock meeting, uh, they gave the wristbands for parents. Four parents, uh, four, four family members per kid, right? Yep. So did all that, you know, still, I would say it was 70% go, 30% obviously could be shut down at any time. Uh, but as far as that point, it was still go. Uh, so I came out of the meeting in the venue, uh, came out. And the guys just got done uh, working out, just got done. Everybody's on weight. Last official practice before weigh-ins at, you know, uh, 7 o'clock the next morning. So now timeline, it's 3 o'clock. I get out of the meeting, got the bands in my hands, got a couple parents even on the floor watching practice. Get done, gather up all the guys. Uh, hey, guys, we're still good positive everything hand out the uh, hand bat, uh, bracelets go back to the hotel so we go back to the hotel and uh, everything's still good and uh, send the coaches to Walmart to get some groceries for after weigh-ins for the next day it's now about four four o'clock 4 30 and then uh, when those guys went me and the athletic trainer went and had lunch or uh, dinner kind of deal and Michael, uh, my guy Michael Michael, Michael Heichel dude hey he's one of the key reasons why Notre Dame wins Michael Heichel he's the real deal I like him dude he's the man he is the man so me and Mike we go down to the you know have a burger and and kind of chill out and all the other coaches are in there and wrestlers in the area and everything we're watching the tv and seeing basketball uh, NBA get canceled and everything like that. And we're supposed to be on an email basis to see if we get canceled or not. So I, I would say up until about 5.30, everything was good. And then we're sitting in the uh, hotel and, and a couple coaches start murmuring and, and everything like that. And they're like, hey, Marchetti, it's over. And then, you know, my phone, ding dings for uh, email and look at the thing and it's over it's over canceled so now my work really begins so now coaching i don't want to say it's easy because it's not uh but i believe my hardest part of coaching when i say coaching i mean like wrestling setting up practices 
That's what I've done my whole life. The hardest part is it really began then. So in my head, I have to take about out what I personally want to accomplish in wrestling this year, being first year of a head coach, um, trying to push for a national title. So I got to take that out. I am no nothing. Uh, what Sonny Marchetti wants to do does not matter. I have to figure out how to contain eight, seven, eight kids with their dreams, parents that are there, and then a hotel full of kids that are in the same boat. And now you got that, you have a hotel bar, right? You got alcohol, uh. you got, <laughs> and I'm going, okay, okay. If you are truly a coach, you'll be able to get these kids home safe and sound. That's my only care. So I gathered all my guys. Right when I got that, I texted everybody. I said, hey, me in room 304. Um, everybody ran up there. I said, hey, got news. Because I really didn't want them to hear it from, you know, everybody else. I want them to hear it from me. Um, you know, so gathered everybody, brought them into my room, broke the news. You know, a lot of kids were crying and hearts broken and, and at the time, I'm like, man, I can't even cry or even go in with them at this point because I got to be on the outside making sure I'm that figure that, you know, is, is steady for. Them. Yeah. So, you know, we'll figure it out. Please, guys, stay together. Uh, you know, don't go off by yourself. You need something, you know, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and we're going to meet again, right? So now through the rest of the night, I'm trying to set meetings uh, so they don't go off in the city and go go haywire. Yeah. And, and get in trouble or, or what have you. Uh, so I try to set a couple more meetings. We all meet. And then it's like, well, let's all meet and go out to dinner. You guys, you know, don't have to make weight. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we, we all went to dinner, uh, invited the parents, sat down, had a nice dinner. Uh, talked and, you know, cried it out a little bit there. And then when we came back, um, I did something that, you know, I thought was pretty neat. So I, I, we were going to, me and the coaches, we're going to surprise the guys with singlets. They had no clue. So we got the new, you know, national gear form and everything. And, and the whole year we had bought Nike singlets and never told, showed anybody, except for the three coaches, the only people that knew. So we wanted to break them out at nationals without even the guys knowing the morning of nationals, right? To give them another kick. Yeah. So unfortunately that didn't happen. And me and the coaches are talking. We're like, dude, what are we going to do about all these brand new singlets? You know, that stinks. So I'm like, you know what? Let's bring everybody down. Uh, they're getting the singlets. So I brought them down. Uh, to the lobby and had the parents and you know that was probably one of the tougher things which was uh you know i, I brought er each kid in you know hunter bray here's your singlet uh and presented them their singlet like you know they were the national champions uh you know that was and they didn't know so when they seen those singlets they were just you know hearts were just torn torn so away bray and zaddy don't come back they're done bray does come back bray, uh Vizetti's done alonzo turner um he's done he was a senior Wait, is, he a, is he a harvey guy yeah i teach at rhetoric you know, he's harvey there it's the neighbors it's a mile from my school yeah so alonzo turner uh came his senior year so uh, he's done uh, Jordan Tag, who is our 65, who I believe had a good shot to do well uh, at the national tournament as well, uh, was a senior. So we had three seniors on there. But I, I gave them all a singlet uh, in the keep, right? Usually you just give them to your seniors for the senior gift and all that. But I just thought that was, you know, we either give them for seniors or, or national champions. Can you shoot me a picture of one of those? I don't even need to post it on social media. I just want to see it. Dude, stay right there. Oh, we're going to get to see it. All right. Love it. 
Let's see what Sonny's got. There's got a lot going on there. And it was the first in school to go this route. It was our first black singlet. Ooh. That's, ooh, I like that. So. What's the back? Just black? Oh, no. Names? Our logo. Dude, our new team little logo. Bring me that logo in. I want to see the logo. Oh, that's sweet, man. That's team beautiful. NBC. Yeah, we all got one to keep. I'm like, you know what? This is going to be a, a precedented year that people talk about for a long time. And, you know, I, I just thought it was important for those guys. They just felt so gypped. And I tell you what, I can only speak for my guys. They train, they train to be national champions. And you know what that feels like. You know, they were training to be team national champions, training to be individual national champions. And not just training, but I believe each and every one of their mindset was about 99.99999% that they were actually going to do it. So with that mindset, they all got their heart broken. Yeah. Broken. Um, you know, not just, hey, I didn't get my national tournament, but, you know, we had a collective goal that I believe they were like, man, I, I really wanted to win this national title for the team. Um, so we were at that point to where each person was like, man, I want to do this for the freaking team. Not just the, you know, 10 guys that traveled, uh, you know, but for the entire team, for everybody at home, for all the wrestlers at home from Notre Dame. I think we did a great job of keeping everybody together, the whole team, uh, the whole year, uh, down to the last practice. You know, our last practice was 35 plus kids, you know, screaming, celebrating. On that Tuesday, you know, I think we're going to come back with a freaking trophy. Yeah. You know, that was our feeling. So, you know, when it got canceled, I think all their, you know, not just personal hopes and dreams, but like, you know, being on that national team forever to where I think 20 years from now, you know, I, like you said, I, I talked to, you know, TJ Williams or Reggie Wright that were with me on those teams 20 years ago. And we always have that, you know, you always have that. Me and Heskett and, and, and the, the, the Walsh Jesuit class just showed up there. Those guys, I don't care what time and point in my life or where I am. Uh, if I see any of those guys or talk to them, it's, we've won national titles together, state titles together. So, and that's kind of the dream that I was, you know, helping them with is, hey, you know, this is why it's so important to train so hard and to do what we're doing because, you know, this is going to be for a lifetime. Uh, next year is going to be a wild year. We never know what they're going to do next year with any of it, if we're having a season or not, man. It's just, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't, at this point, I don't even know what to say. I don't even know if like it's productive to really have a, cause we're so unsure what they're opening up, yep. the second wave, whatever is going to, I don't even know what to say at this point. You know what I mean, Sonny? I agree. Uh, you know, things change so much every day and, you know, it's getting harder and harder, I think, to control what you can control, right? Yeah, really. That's what we're all taught. Yeah. That, I think that's what we're all taught. So, you know, only control what you can control. And, and right now, we can't control what we can control. And whatever we can control can change on a daily basis. Yeah, they move the goalpost a lot. You know, yeah. You know, we're, so, we're open up what we're not going to open up. It's just, it's wild. And, and wrestling, I feel, is it's very easy to target wrestling because it's a contact sport and you're in such close proximity. Uh, I agree. You know, and you I know, know it's, say, you know, I mean, it, it's tough and you know what, what we can do right now. And, um, you know, I just look at this as kind of that downtime, you know, there's going to be something big at the end of this for us. Uh, and, you know, in the meantime, I just tell my guys and we, we meet regular basis on the zoom like this. And, and we try to keep things fun. You know, we'll, we'll do new techniques uh, or the coaches show techniques, but um, getting up and working out and, you know, only control what you can control. That's why probably I get up every day and work out because I'm like, 
I don't know what the world's going to bring after nine o'clock. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Control the controllables. Be positive, right? Like you want to be positive. Yeah. Control, and, uh, control for the time you can control it, right? Like, that's it. <laughs> like hiking, like we're going to do here in a little bit. Um, okay. Yep. We're going to wrap up here. We've been on almost two hours. <laughs> awesome, man. It's been great talking. I, yeah. It's been great I'll, talking. I, I'll, I try not to. And uh, I do apologize on on live, right, or online here that, uh, you know, I know you – I was reached out a couple times on my thoughts right after, you know, the the national tournament was canceled, right at the beginning of the pandemic. And, and I didn't answer a lot of those calls because I just wasn't ready. Um, I think the talk on it, uh, had a lot of motion. Um, and, and I'm glad I didn't just because there was a lot of things that have changed since then. So, you know, some things I backed, you know, a month ago, a month and a half ago that have changed. Uh, and other things I didn't back that are probably, you know, what's going on now. So, you know, I did hold off on, on some of those. And, um, you know, and, and a lot of that was just to make sure my team aftermath was okay uh i didn't want to say anything about seniors not yet getting another year or you know anything on that because you know it was all spectacle it was all spectacle nobody knows if seniors are going to get a year to come back or uh or what have you my opinions on all of that um were across the board yeah so, the speculation as to whether they were going to get another year or not they're giving the spring sport ones another year they're not giving your guys another year. It's mm -hmm. wild, man. Wild stuff. Um, are you guys going to the skate park today? Yes. What skate He's park? Been you go to Cuyahoga Falls? Where do you go? Yeah, we go to Cuyahoga Falls. We go to Akron, skate park, Cuyahoga Falls. Um, I'd say Akron's our big one because uh, not too many people go there. It's kind of on a private uh, area. I mean, it's open to anybody, but I just don't think a lot of people know about it too, too much. Secluded. Or well, uh, what's that? Secluded, an area that people just don't know about. Correct. So we go there. Cuyahoga Falls is cool. And, you know, we're going to be moving up to the Akron area or Cleveland area. Uh, but yeah, skate, you know, controlling what you can control. Skate park. Skate park. There you go. All right. I got a scooter. <laughs> okay. Hey, I got to send you some of the new stuff. Oh yeah, Good stuff. That's the new one. We gotta okay. get. You gotta next time I see you, or if I'm uh, up at that Euclid Creek, I gotta bring you some new stuff. The new defense stuff, obviously. The uh, new logo. It's still the same I was say, the product. The packaging that. looks awesome. The packaging looks fierce. Yes, they they changed the game. Now another thing, if I have one, I I don't want to wear these, but Barbarian Apparel made me no way this is for my kids these are youths these are youths. that's awesome so i'm gonna have to give you one for your you and your kids yeah but they, barbarian apparel and josh sassy made me some of those so i like to sweet. shout out to my partners at the end of these uh conversations sunny but hey you got anything else for me we good we're good brother uh you know I hope we talk uh, the next time uh, this way as far as, uh, you know, talking during the wrestling season. Uh, if not, I hope to see you in person, hopefully before then. But, yeah, you know, hopefully we're talking during the wrestling season and maybe a pre-season opener kind of gig. And, you know, anybody watching this, the only thing I would probably promote would be, you know, my program. Uh, go to Notre Dame Facebook page. We're doing fundraisers. We're doing a 5K run uh, coming up. Uh, fundraiser for Notre Dame and uh, yeah you know we try to promote that we want to keep the sport moving um, so check out the Notre Dame Facebook page and see what we're doing we're always doing something you know fun are you answering the question a lot what where's Notre Dame College is that the fighting Irish do you answer that question a lot yeah and it I tell you what uh, depends on where I'm at I kind of go with the flow yeah <laughs> And who's asking the question? I've been in airports before and, you know, like, oh, Notre Dame, they're back in the ACC and all that, or this, you know, I don't even know football talk, but 
I'm like, I'll just raise it up and be like, you know, okay. Not even worth fighting the fight sometimes. No, it was a falcon, but we're good. <laughs> uh. <laughs> all right, hey, I'm going to cut this live video and cut this recording right. real quick. Stick around for a little bit, all right? You got it, brother. All righty.